Hey friends, it's Danelle from Painted and welcome to our final live video in our five part milk paint series. If you've missed our previous videos, no worries. You can look in the files section and you can see the previous videos. Um, if you have no clue what I'm talking about, basically what we have done together is we've learned all about milk paint. We've learned how to mix milk paint. We've learned how to store milk paint. We've learned how to use it on different surfaces so that we are confident and we know how it will react. We know whether or not it will chip. We know if it will soak right into the surface. We also know how much to mix so that we are not wasteful with our product. And we know how to prevent um, tannin bleed through so that our projects will be successful and we won't get that evil, you know, bleeding spots and knots coming through later in life, which can obviously happen if we're going over like mahogany or knotty pine. Um, we learned all about the different finishes and the unique looks you can get with the milk paint. So we have had many lessons and we've built upon our knowledge. We've learned that we can create all these different finishes. We can do more advanced techniques such as layering milk paint, creating a chippy look. So if you've missed any of those lessons, I encourage you to look up into the files and watch them. So today in our final lesson, we're going to talk about how to, um, how to seal milk paint because it is a porous paint and you do need to top coat it. Um, I've referenced a lot to fusion mineral paint because that's the paint that a lot of you are already familiar with. And with fusion mineral paint, it has a built in top coat, so you don't need to top coat it. It's always optional. But with milk paint, if you choose not to top coat it, it will absorb stains. It will continue to distress. So I definitely, I always top coat it. Um, there are situations, like I explained that this picture frame here in my studio, I have it unsealed because I use it as an example. And also to be honest, people are not ever touching this, but then I can explain to people how this is what it looks like unsealed versus my sample that is sealed. So I can show the true color versus um, the unsealed look. But in general, I always recommend that you do top coat it. So, um, 75% of the time, my top coat of choice is always hemp oil. Now, what I wanna to explain today, and I do have a ton of samples to show you guys, is your top coat is going to, it can vary depending on the look that you want, which is what I'm gonna show you, and also the finish that you're trying to achieve, because it's going to vary. If you're going for a super chippy look, you're gonna choose a different top coat. It also might determine based on the color that you painted your piece. So what I want you guys to do today is keep in mind, and I'm gonna give you guys examples because I'm all about the samples, right? I have like, I guess we can call it a color wheel. I painted out two colors and I chose this basically with um, our brightest white, which is hotel rope, and then our darkest color, which is um, little black dress. So think in your head, if you were painting a piece of furniture, maybe what color you would choose and then apply the information I'm gonna give you so that you could think what top coat you would want to use. I probably shouldn't have picked this up because I have all the little colors next to it and oh well, work with me you guys. Um, let's just set it there because what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip the camera down and so when I show you guys the samples, um, it makes sense to you. Also, if you have top coats at home that you're using with your fusion mineral paint, just know that these are the same top coats that you would use with your milk paint. So they're all compatible, which is amazing because it's all the same line. Um, fusion also has an amazing reference guide. So all this information, you don't have to write stuff down. I can put a link once I'm done with this video and it's like a PDF or no, they made like a blog post. So I can link that too and all this information will also work. So I can link that to the video too, and you guys can reference that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip the camera down so I can kind of show you what I'm talking about, but I think a lot of these tips are gonna be very helpful so that you guys can kind of have a visual guide to see what we're talking about. But when I said it kind of depends on the surface that you're painting, the reason I wanted to mention that, and I, I love to use hemp oil personally, is because with milk paint, for example, let's say we get a super chippy finish. 
There are um, top coats that we don't want to use if we have a super duper chippy finish. For example, this piece right here I have as um, part of my display that you guys see behind me. And I sealed this um, with hemp oil. And it probably wasn't the best choice. And the reason I say that is this is still flaking off and um, shedding its paint, which means this hemp oil was not the most durable top coat for this piece. I always love to have samples and examples to show the fails. Basically, as an educator and a retailer, the best thing I can do is provide knowledge to people. So obviously I need to fix this. If this was a piece like a furniture and I was selling it to a customer or if this was a piece in my home, I wouldn't want it to continuously flake off, right? So a better top coat would not be hemp oil for a piece that is super duper chippy because what happens with hemp oil, for example, is it penetrates through the paint, it's supposed to bond to the wood, but because this piece, and I don't wanna flake it off right now, is so chippy, um, the hemp oil is not the best top coat for this. So when I tip the camera down and I give examples, I'm gonna show you, for example, a better top coat option. If your piece is super duper chippy, I would not recommend hemp oil then as being a top coat of choice. So if you guys have questions and I miss them, I will definitely answer them afterwards or if I see them, I will. I can't see any comments right now. I have noticed that I don't see comments during the live, but I can definitely answer them afterwards. So I will tip the camera down and kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. Let me, I might have to turn this light off because I think I have a funny glare right now. Okay, I think you guys can see my little color wheel. It's hard for me to see. Okay, so what I wanted to kind of explain is the cool thing when it comes to milk paint is you see the true color once you top coat it. A lot of times people kind of mess up their finish when they get to top coating, but the awesome thing with milk paint is we actually see the beautiful color of our paint once we top coat. So a lot of times people dislike the top coating portion of their painting project, but with milk paint, it's actually the most rewarding portion of our paint because that's when we see the true beauty of our colors. What's also awesome is depending on the top coat that you choose, you can actually get so many different effects and almost feel like you're getting multiple paint colors just by buying one you know, thing of paint. But if you have multiple top coats at home, you can get a ton of different almost effects. So I obviously have a lot of different looks on this little color wheel. And I'm just gonna show you guys a couple of examples but there are tons of different options that you can have. Um, in general, we love to use oil-based on our dark colors because they really make the vibrancy of our dark colors in general pop. And we like to stick with water-based colors for our lighter colors. You don't wanna really put anything that's oil-based over like a white because oil-based colors or oils are gonna make like our whites kind of get yellow. So we're gonna start right here. And I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to, let me see if I can angle this. Actually, I hope you guys, let me tip this a little bit up more. There we go. So right here on this one, I have copper wax over our hotel robe. So hotel robe starts as our brightest white, but by putting Fusion's copper wax over the white, you can kind of just get a really cool effect. But using that same copper wax over a black color, such as um, little black dress, look at how neat that looks. So the same top coat, a completely different impact depending on your paint color. So super neat there. All of the waxes are compatible over milk paint. So again, right here, I have aging wax over white. And obviously um, aging wax isn't gonna do much impact over a dark color over a black, so I didn't choose that to put over black, but over a white, it really can give like a neat, you know, dark, shabby, chic, grunge look, but it's awesome to put like, if you have a piece that has, you know, really cool molding, it can really give like a neat impact. So that would be a really cool option for a top coat 
over like a light color. Um, we have in the Fusion Mineral Paint line some stain and finishing oil. It's an awesome, very durable top coat. So that can be another option you could do over your milk paint. So if you like like that restoration hardware finish, this is what it looks like over the hotel robe with driftwood stain and finishing oil. That's a super durable finish, especially if you're doing like kitchen cabinets or like a dining room table. That could be a really neat and yet very super durable top coat option. Um, so here it is over white. But look how cool it also looks over that dark black color. So again, driftwood stain and finishing over white, but I hope you guys can see this. Driftwood over black, super neat. Same top coat, but if you put it over a different paint, super awesome effect. These again, oil-based colors. And I, you know, I said you shouldn't use oil base over white, but obviously I am using it over white, but just a very different impact. Um, our natural stain and finishing oil in the Fusion line looks like this. A definitely a good option over um, milk paint in our black line. I would not use the natural stain and finishing oil over the white because this in this situation is gonna get very ambered over time and kind of yellowed. So this one, we're gonna wanna stay away from. But if you need a super durable finish, such as like a kitchen tabletop, something that's gonna be washed daily, that's when we have, hiding over here, we have Tough Coat. So Tough Coat, if you're familiar with that from the Fusion Mineral Paint line, it's our water-based poly, and that comes in both a matte finish or glossy. And that, in white, this is what it looks like over matte. And I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it, but what I can do when I'm done is I have a really nice picture that I can just post in the comments. And here it is over white and glossy. Now, um, the tough coat and glossy... I can put it over black and it works well, but we kind of avoid tough coat and matte over um, our black surfaces because it can get cloudy and hazy. And unless you put it on super duper thin, a lot of times um, people struggle with application of tough coat over our darker colors. So we kind of recommend you stay away from tough coat over the dark colors. It's just hard to work with. So for darker colors, if you're looking for some really durable finish, stick with the natural stain and finishing oil. But if you need durability over the lighter colors, go with the tough coat. Um, always, you can do clear waxes over milk paint. That's gonna work over our, our light colors, our dark colors. And when it comes to our clear waxes, we have um, regular clear wax, and we also have them in scented, which I just think is fun. But I do want to let you guys know, because I think sometimes people are a little bit confused, the scents will um, go away after a while. So it's more of like aromatherapy and it's therapeutic while you're, you know, doing your waxing process. But just know, you know, after a week when you open up like your dresser drawers, don't expect there still to be a scented aroma. It's going to, you know, dissolve after a while. Um, one of my absolute favorite waxes to work with is our liming wax. Consider it like a white wax. And I like the white wax over both dark and light colors. And here's a perfect example. Well, let's hold it back here. Here it is over black. It gives like such a cool um, whitewashed look. But what I like to also use the liming wax is over white. And the reason I like it over white is if you really want to crisp up your white, you can use the liming, basically like a white wax, over your white and just make your white even more crisp. Because a lot of times people don't consider using white wax over white paint, but you obviously can and it's just going to make your white even more vibrant. So don't, you know, count that out. Um, you can definitely put the hemp oil over the white paint. I've used hemp oil over whites a ton and I have not had um, yellowing and I've used hemp oil 
for years over white and I've never seen um, issues. One thing I do want to point out, and I haven't, um, I want to show you guys this. I, hopefully you guys can see it on the lighting. Thumbs up if you guys can see this. Do you see how these two bottles look completely different? I think you guys can see that with the lighting. They're both hemp oil by Fusion. This one over here looks a lot lighter than this one. They are both 100% perfect hemp oil. This one's not better than this one. This one's not bad and this one's good. The reason that they are different colored is just because of when the hemp seed was harvested. And I want you to know that. So if you receive a hemp oil and one is lighter than the one you have at home and one's almost empty, don't think you received a you know defective hemp oil. Just know that it depends on when the hemp seed was harvested and your hemp oil is still perfectly fine. So I just don't want you to be alarmed if you receive a hemp oil that looks a little bit darker than a different one, okay? It's not gonna affect your project. The hemp oil is still perfectly fine. And I keep this as an example to show people. So just know that. Okay, where was I? Um, there's obviously tons of options. Another option is our, this is a newer product to some of you. You might not know about it. Our, here we go. The gel stain, um, the gel stains. They come in a bunch of different colors. Patina is basically clear. And then we have tinted ones like black, gray stone. Um, these are soup. These are probably the most durable out of all the top coats that I'm showing you. They are a thicker consistency. When I talked about this stuff right here, when I said it was super chippy and the hemp oil was not the best option. So right now, if I had to fix this problem, right? Because I have a dresser, I did hemp oil on it, and I realized, oops, that was a fail. Now what, right? What do I do now? Because let's talk about when we have problems. If I wanted to fix this, I don't want to keep disturbing it, right? Because if I was gonna wax it, it's gonna make more of my paint fall off. And let's say I like the look of it. So typically, I wanna do something where I'm disturbing it the least. Here are a couple options. We learned about spraying stuff. So if I was spraying, obviously that would make my stuff adhere. I love to use something that I can just brush on where I'm not mushing it like with a wax brush. I wouldn't wanna use wax first of all because wax wouldn't be a good option either. So I'm gonna ignore this option. The gel stain would be a great option because this stuff is very durable and it's also basically something that you apply and you just let it dry and walk away. But it is quite thick. So what I would do to fix this problem is this could be an option, but I would thin it. And in order to thin this stuff, you would use odorless solvent and you'd thin it about 50%. We're kind of to the problem solving part, guys, in case I'm, I'm losing you a little bit. Um, and then you could just brush it on. So that would be one option. Let's pretend that this was painted in like a white color. I wouldn't want to use something like this because this is going to amber my white chippy dresser, let's say. So if we have to fix this oopsie, we can't use patina gel stain because it's going to get yellowed over time. A wonderful option would be in this situation then to switch to our our clear tough coat. 75% of the time I said I seal all my pieces with hemp oil. The other 25% of the time I'm usually using tough coat. Tough coat works like as a wonderful glue in my opinion because it dries super fast and it can seal your chippy milk paint because basically when you apply it, it dries super fast and you'd be brushing it on. And then what happens is some of these little flakes, you might shift them a little bit, but they're gonna dry as you're painting. I do have other video tutorials on my actual painted Facebook, like my page. So if you wanna go check them out, I did like a little crib and stuff, you can see that as well. Um, another thing, and this will be a quick video. 
Another thing I did want to talk about that I think is super important is I said it, your piece will really dictate which top coat you use. So this is all we're talking about interior surfaces, waxes, hemp oil, um, let's see, yeah, the tough coat. I like to use all those for interior surfaces. If you're painting a picnic table, um, signs, stuff like that, you need an exterior grade product, something that's going to hold up to, you know, water and weather. In that case, because milk paint's amazing, you guys, for using outdoors, but you need an exterior top coat for your milk painted pieces. We highly recommend you seal it with um, our Fusion Tongue Oil. Tongue Oil is an amazing top coat for your milk painted exterior pieces. Again, you can thin this stuff, the tongue oil, with our Fusion Odorless Solvent. Great option. The only exception, again, is if you paint it like a bright white. If you use the tongue oil, you're going to see a little bit of ambering, like the yellowing effect, over that white, bright white surface. So in that situation, I would go for... Um, a marine grade exterior top coat. There are some on the market. Um, this is like the one I love. But what you need to make sure that you do is read your cans, okay guys? Because here's a perfect example. These two are made by the exact same manufacturer, right? So if you don't read your cans, you think, oh great, I grabbed the right one, right? You need to make sure that when you're looking, you grab one that says exterior use because this one could be used outside in work. This one is only for interior use. So I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna tip this up a little bit. Um, so your, your finish is going to dictate the top coat that you use. For example, this piece right here, just a little piece of architectural salvage, I top coated this with clear wax. It's not super chippy. Um, I had clear wax on hand. It's just milk painted in hotel robe, and it's a very durable finish. Um, if this was exposed to moisture like a tabletop and it was wiped daily, I would not have used clear wax. I could have still used clear wax. I would just know that I would have to, um, you know, reapply it more often. If it was wiped a lot, I would have probably chose to go with tough coat in that situation. This dresser, obviously I have the whole dresser, but I can grab the drawer really easily. This dresser drawer, although it looks super chippy, this is the one that I had to force the chipping. I still sealed this with um, hemp oil because the paint is very much stuck to the surface. It did not want to flake off naturally. So hemp oil was a great top coat option for this color and for this paint because the paint is really adhered well to it. Now, if the paint was, you know, just flaking off really bad, tough coat would not, I'm sorry, hemp oil would not have been probably the best option for this. Let me show you guys. That chest, this one, um, hemp oil would be a not great option for that because it would make all the rest of that paint that is adhered to it most likely fall off. So I hope that makes sense, you know, to you guys as you're thinking about which top coats you can use. You want to, like when we talked about our first, um, our first lesson on evaluating your surface, think about the surface that you have and what, you know, what finish you want and then evaluate what look you're going to achieve. Um, if you guys ever have any questions, I'm always happy to help you and with your process too, you could always send me pictures and I can recommend what I would use. And um, if you start to gather a couple top coats, just think of all the different options you also have to achieve a bunch of different finishes. I hope this is inspiring to you. What I will do once I'm done, I don't know if Team Fusion put a link, but there is a, an amazing top coats guide that Fusion has come up with that um, I can put in the link or in the comments if they did not. I will also put a picture of this little 
I have it upside down. Yeah, this little color wheel so that you can have a better visual if it was hard for you to see so that you guys can have an idea. But you have so many possibilities. But the one thing I do want to emphasize is you will not see the true color of your milk paint until you top coat it. So with milk paint, you'll see the true beauty of your color once you apply your top coat. I hope that makes sense. Have a great day, friends, and I hope that you found these lessons all helpful. And I'm here, so please feel free to reach out on my page, Painted, and I'm happy to help guide you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.